Hello, can you guys hear me okay? Awesome, how's everybody doing? Great. <laughs> um, so my name is Angela, and to hello everyone here physically and to those that are streaming. Um, I work as a product owner for the Swarm organization, and my primary focus is on the Fair Drive DAP. But today I'm going to play proxy and fill you in on the, what the entire Swarm organization has been working on. So what you can expect for the next few moments are updates including milestones. We'll be talking a little bit about Fair Drive, and then we're going to end things with a few really cool announcements. So without further ado, let's kick things off. Um, for those that may not be familiar, um, Swarm is a system of peer-to-peer. -peer. Thank you. Sorry. Better? We're going to try this. OK. All right, so for those that may not be familiar, Swarm is a system of peer-to-peer -peer networked nodes that create a decentralized storage and communication service. The system is economically self-sustaining due to a built-in incentive system enforced through smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain. Swarm's longer-term vision is to become the operating system of Reed decentralized internet. It provides a scalable and self-sustaining infrastructure for a supply chain economy of data. Um, and before I dive into the product updates, I did want to peel the cover back on who we're considering when we work through our solutions. So, our vision and what we're building needs to support a variety of user types. I'm sure that's not shocking to anyone. Uh, we want to be robust in our use cases and thoughtful on our approach based on participants on our network. So for instance, we want our end users to have a smooth experience starting a node and have tools to monitor and interact with their local node. This experience and toolkit would be different from what a DAP developer would be looking for, and we want to equip DAP developers with a mature toolkit that allows them to integrate Swarm in their Web3 DAP. And then we have operators who set up nodes and are incentivized to contribute their bandwidth and storage. And then collaborators are alternative client development efforts that utilize uh, our protocols and APIs. And then last, we have our community where our aim is to encourage autonomous, independent, and permissionless communities to take further ownership over the protocol and its usages. So all these user types come together to form the foundation of Swarm. And so you may be asking, or not, um, what are we doing you know, to support you? And so I want to talk about Milestone 1, which we had just accomplished. Um, and this coincided with the winter solstice. And our milestone was to host unstoppable and immutable content on Swarm. So said differently, we wanted to allow users to upload and download content, such as website or even NFT metadata, that is optimized um, and, more importantly, reliable. So this body of work is implemented across all the Swarm products. So B, Gateway, Swarm CLI, Chrome extension, Dashboard, um, and last but certainly not least, BJS. Um, OK, so cool. But what does that really mean? The network is reliable enough to store websites. So for instance, this is really cool. Uh, our own site utilizes our own network. And you can find it at swarm.bzz.link. Files, folders, and websites can be uploaded and downloaded. And you can use your own ENS domain or generated name as subdomain with a bzz.link. Uh, and your website or front-end app will work just as it would as if it were served by a normal Web2 content hosting service. Um, you can use feeds to update content off-chain, so no on-chain transaction cost. This is definitely more of a beta feature, but I did want to address it because we love to see it. Um, and so what we've achieved with this milestone and, and what we can offer are permissionless upload and download, a robust defense against blocking or changing access to content once published, integrity of protected content, and last, eventually forgetting or signaling to the network to delete content that is no longer relevant to preserve. So now that we have an understanding of what the milestone one entails, um, I wanted to share some results. So obviously, we need a way to measure if we're successful or not. So going into this milestone, the following was established as a means of success metrics. Small data and dApps, so approximately like five megabytes, can be uploaded and downloaded reliably. Certainly larger files are possible, um, and we're testing that limit daily, but I do want to stress like the reliability of it, so we're going to continue to grow in that respect. Uh, and I just wanted to acknowledge uh, the average download speeds on here as well. They are a bit slower than what we would expect um, of the normal internet, but there's a lot going on in Swarm to satisfy the security and availability guarantees, and these are just initial retrievals from the network without any caching. So keep a lookout for a blog post coming out from us to further highlight the state of the network. 
Um, and building upon the success of Milestone 2, we've started our efforts for, or success of Milestone 1, we've started our efforts for Milestone 2. So taking a look at the Milestone 2, uh, this is setting up and interacting with the B node and optimizing it for ease of use. So in a nutshell, we really want for any crypto enthusiast with an interest in Swarm to be able to set up and run a B node easily. As it stands today, it's not the least cumbersome task uh, for a user. So um, you may be asking, how are we going to go about fixing this? So we're currently working on a desktop app with the UI for basic uh, operations that you can install without any registration or blockchain interaction. And here's how that would work. Uh, it will first run as an ultralight node, meaning that you can access and or download the data, um, but not upload. So our milestone one accomplishment of uploading and downloading files and folders and websites is leveraged to create this ultralight node. And essentially, the user would have to complete a crypto onboarding to fund their node. In order to unlock the uploading functionality, the user, again, would need to fund their node. So after that, um, we have our light node. And uploading, sorry, after that, we have our light node. And therefore, uploading is possible, but does not enable data storage for others. And milestone two is directly aimed at simplifying the process so it can be done in less than 30 minutes. So that's sort of our benchmark, is that 30 minute. Mark, um, and this would be for Mac, Windows, Linux, on both mainnet and testnet. Um, we don't really have a great data point today on average how long it takes to set up a B node. I mean, if I had to guess, I'd say anywhere from like an, an hour to half a day, but regardless, it's just absolutely not good enough, and we're gonna do something about that here in Milestone 2. And in addition to optimizing the B nodes, we're working on improving the documentation so that node operators are up and running in less than 30 minutes as well. Um, this means we're simplifying and documenting the operations of our gateway so that everyone can do it easily. And the overall value to optimizing here is so that we can attract a larger audience. So obviously, the easier it is to set up a B node, the more that will be set up, in turn results in a stronger network because it will be much more decentralized with more diverse users and node operators. And this allows more people to be able to publish and access content um, through this gateway setup. Developers and communities can easily access the Swarm network. Um, so then looking into the future, uh, I just wanted to quickly go over milestones three and four for the benchmarks that we'll be focusing on. Uh, and so these are node operators are directly rewarded for contributing their storage space, uh, basically the holy grail of decentralized storage, if you will, and optimizing for larger data uploads. Uh, you can view the most up-to-date information on the Swarm milestones at the URL on the screen here. So it's progress.eswarm.org. Um, and that will have our most up-to-date milestone information. Uh, to switch gears a little bit, I would like to kick things over to FairDrive. So FairDrive, I love FairDrive. So where innovation, interoperability, and decentralization unite in the name of Fair Data, FairDrive is a community-driven initiative started by Swarm with the mission to empower freedom and enable data interoperability on the DAP level. So by enabling decentralized storage, developers can create and build interoperable, decentralized, and open source dApps so that users can reclaim their privacy, own their data, and control their digital identity. So welcome to FairDrive, a personal data store built on top of Ethereum Swarm. FairDrive is your digital safe space that's controlled by you, a dApp that consists of a typical drive interface uh, with files and folders and a BZZ wallet to manage token balances and key pairs. So under the hood, an engine is running a file system on top of Ethereum Swarm. So if we were to create like a little FairDrive sandwich, it can consists of FairDrive the dApp, which um, creates the UI layer, and then we have the Fair Data protocol that's used to communicate with FairOS that sits on top of Swarm. So a lot of work has been done on FairDrive over the past few months. And what you're seeing here is a screenshot of this step. Um, we have done everything from code refactoring to feature optimization and definitely improved usability. So for a quick recap on what all that entailed, um, we have a new look and feel and a more intuitive experience. And if you're unfamiliar with how FairDrive used to look, I would say it was kind of like a dark hole, and I say that with love, but it truly was like, if you can picture it, a terminal window. So this is a vast improvement. Um, a few other things that we've done in terms of optimization is adding robustness uh, to the drive portion in a few key areas. 
So you can now upload and download files stored in your fair drive in addition to deleting files. Any pod or file can be shared and displayed in a friend's fair drive by selecting the file in pod, copying the generated hash, and then a user can easily toggle back and forth to see which files are there and which files they have that are shared. And then we've also implemented searching and sorting. Um, it's gotten a lot easier, and we give you five common options on how you want your files sorted. Drive now supports uploading a CSV directly into the pod's key value store. Um, this allows for queries of the data inside, which can be a really powerful tool. And then we've also implemented a native consents viewer that allows users to open up consent receipts uh, within FairDrive. So in addition to the drive portion, we have an explore section as well. And this is kind of what I call a DAP marketplace, but it's for the application developers um, that have created and built DAPs that support the interoperability and decentralization. So we support a few currently, uh, Dracula, which is a markdown editor. We have uh, another consents viewer, and then we have a photo viewer as well. And if anybody is interested, we are actively looking for DAP developers to expand on our marketplace. So I would really love to connect with anybody that has a project. Um, so please come find me. And then we also have some exciting things in the work as we're looking ahead. Uh, we're preparing the app for a private mainnet beta. We've been working on a way to support NFTs in FairDrive. So in the near future, you'll be able to generate an NFT based on the data you have stored in FairDrive. We're adding improved dApps to our Explore tab, um, including a new improved photo viewer. And then last, we'll be incorporating some additional um, like common folders. So today, a consent folder is automatically added to your fair drive when you create an account. We'll be looking to expand upon that in the future. And then other things that are on our radar are definitely seamless login, and then again, continuing to add dApps to our marketplace. Um, one last thing that I'd like to note before switching gears off of FairDrive is that the FairDrive development will follow the development of the Fair Data Protocol so for interoperability with different storage, um, different data storage backends. All right, wait, I didn't want to go into this slide just yet. So I'm really excited about this. I got to take a deep breath, but um, we're going to give you guys a little bit of alpha here. So just to reiterate, this is alpha. Um, but I, and I hesitated to share, but again, it's too good. We're in the final stages of writing FairOS running in Wasm. This means client-side FairOS can interact with bees on local networks or over gateways. So apps can use swarm storage as a directory file system seamlessly. And we've reduced the size of binary from 14 megabytes to 3.5 for Wasm assembly and have near native speeds for encryption and chunking. So imagine the development opportunities like Seriously, it's really, really cool. Um, and then I do have one last, another exciting announcement as well. We're going to be hosting an event. So from March 1st through 21st, artists, gamers, developers, activists, crypto, and non-crypto people, people are going to come together in the second Fair Data Society Festival and Hackathon organized by Swarm and Partners. So this event is known as We Are Millions, or WAM, uh, and it will explore the power of art, blockchain, and games to create a fair and ethical, private, censorship-free, permissionless, and unstoppable Web3. We'll be experimenting with game mechanics and NFTs to see how they can enable playful collaboration. There will be worthless NFT drops that will hopefully make the experience priceless and soulbound. Uh, expect resistance. The game and NFTs will make the hackathon fun and exciting, and we'll be experimenting with DAOs and how they can facilitate collaboration. The following tracks will be addressed that you see on the screen. Art, music, activism, privacy, DAO, DAPs, Web3, Liberate Data, game development, and so much more. Uh, so if this sounds like your jam, please, please, please take a moment to register at the URL, and we'll see you in the metaverse. So that felt like a lot. I probably talked really fast. Um, but before I sprint off stage, I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew how to get in contact with us. If you have any questions or want to get involved, you can hit us at any of those links above. And we definitely are hiring. So if you guys are looking to get into this space or have some experience, I'd love to chat as well.